Are we good? Excellent. Hello, everybody. We're actually on, and it's 6 o'clock. We haven't had any technical difficulties yet, so I'm going to be really excited about that because we tend to have a lot of technical difficulties, and I'm going to blame them all on myself because I am not technically minded. Um, for those of you on Facebook that are watching, at 6 o'clock, like you're supposed to because it's working, um, my name is Melissa Hornsbeck. This is Haley Billings. We are both registered dietitians with the Tulsa Health Department. It's all about kids program. And then we also write and present these cooking demonstrations that we hold on the second and fourth Thursdays of every month. If you wanted to come out and eat the food that we have, these are open to the public. Um, but if you just want to watch them on Facebook when you're sitting home and you know, with your shoes off and watching it there, that's great too. That's why we do it. The recipes will be posted in the comments. Um, I think Lori's gonna post them afterwards. So just try and follow along and then look in the comments later and you'll see those recipes. But we're gonna start over here with the Instant Pots. So tonight's class is all about cooking dried beans. And one of the reasons we're using the dried beans is Canned beans, while they're a great resource and they're a great staple and they're really good for you, they can sometimes be a little high in sodium. So if you're looking to control your sodium or you just, you know, like to have complete control over all the seasonings that go into your food, dried beans are an incredibly easy and economic way to do that. They're also a wonderful source of protein and fiber. However, if you don't plan ahead, it's a little hard to use dried beans unless you have an Instant Pot, and then you can do it this way. So I've got some dried black beans right here, and I just gave them a quick rinse. I'd already gone through and kind of sorted out any um, little bits and bad pieces that might have been in there. So I'm just gonna put those into the liner of my Instant Pot. I'm gonna put in about eight cups of water here, and that was to a pound of beans. But really, the general rule is you wanna make sure that your beans are covered by about an inch and a half to two inches of water. And I found I have to pour this slowly, otherwise I get water all over the counter. I cleaned the counter many times today. So once you have your beans and your water in your inner liner, you're going to lock your lid on. You're gonna make sure that your valve is in the sealed position. And then we are going to just turn on pressure cook, turn it on high pressure, and the type of bean is going to determine how long you're going to cook it. So another thing that's gonna go into the comments is this list here that's gonna show you the cook time by bean type. So this is black beans. So you wanna cook them 20 to 25 minutes. I'm gonna set it for 20 because you're also going to do a natural release for about 10 minutes after it's done cooking before you um, vent the steam because you know the Instant Pot lid will lock into place and it won't come off unless you vent the steam. There's two ways to do that. You can either turn it and the steam comes out, like we've seen, or you let it sit naturally and do that. With starchy items like beans, you don't want to do an immediate um, venting. You can let it go for about 10 minutes with a natural release and then let it vent, and it won't be quite so forceful, and that those starches that are in the steam won't clog up your Thing. So right here, we see, let me go this way, because you always want to stand on this side of your Instant Pot when you're venting it, although that one's not going to have a ton of steam left over because it's been natural releasing. And yes, that's mine from home, and it is a dragon, and I have a three-year-old, and he loves it. But the one of the main reasons you have one of these steam directors on it is because otherwise the steam goes straight up. And a lot of people keep their Instant Pots right below their cabinets, and the cabinets tend to be wood and all that moisture, and then it's a mess. So this is trying to mitigate that mess. They make them in non-dragon form, but if you're gonna buy one, why wouldn't you get a dragon? I mean, really? They also have ones that look like the little smokestacks or the steam pipes from um, Super Mario Brothers. Those are pretty cute too. And you're gonna let it vent until the pin drops. Once the pin is dropped, which it'll do in just a second, you're gonna be able to unlock the lid. And that's when these are gonna be the chickpeas we're using and one of our recipes tonight will be done. Now the chickpeas I did earlier because those cook for longer. Those cook for about 35 to 40 minutes. Um, soybeans are actually gonna be the ones that cook the longest. 
And when you look at this list, you'll notice I did try to put it from longest to shortest amount of cooking time. So when you're cooking them in the Instant Pot, you do not need to pre-soak them. You do not need to pre-cook them. You don't need to soak them overnight. This was from the bag, you rinse it, you pick out any pieces that might be bad, you put it in here. And with the time it takes to come to pressure and the time it takes to depressurize, um, I timed the chickpeas this afternoon when I made them and it was about an hour and 10 minutes, which for dried beans, not bad. And I'm gonna make sure I hit cancel on there because otherwise the keep warm function will stay on and I don't want it to do that. So I am going got to get out my, you're gonna to wanna to use hot pads for this. So for it is hot. Amount of water, yes. you just follow the directions based on what it would be if you were doing it on the stove top, correct? Yes, you wanna make sure that you have at least an inch to an inch and a half of water above wherever your beans are. But you also wanna make sure that you don't fill the Instant Pot more than three quarters of the way full because the beans are going to expand and you don't want it to then get above that max line, which is the two thirds line. So I just went ahead and rinsed and um, drained those. And I'm gonna let them sit here for a minute and cool down before we make that recipe. And I'm gonna start on a recipe using the black beet. So I cooked some black beans earlier and those are, I'm not cooking the beet, <laughs> and those are in there, but so those won't be done for another 40 minutes. So through the magic of television, I've got these done here. And we're gonna be making some walking burritos. So in my skillet, I have some olive oil heating up and I'm gonna put some yellow onion in there. And that's just one smallish yellow onion that I cut up. If you don't love onion, you can use less or cut it smaller. So if you like onion and the person that you're gonna share these with doesn't, you can make them smaller so maybe they won't notice the onion quite so much. So we're gonna saute that around a little bit. I'm gonna put in my garlic. You're gonna use about a clove of garlic. Again, if you really like garlic, you can add more. If you don't like garlic, you can add less. This isn't baking. So you can cook by your senses. Although I did, Haley and I were just talking about this before, I did measure my olive oil because as a dietitian, I do measure my fats that I put in. I don't really measure my spices all that much unless it's salt, just because I like flavor. So I like to amp up the flavor. And as long as it's not adding any sodium, any added sugar, um, any added fat, then play with your flavors. This would also be a good time if you're going to throw in any other vegetables, like if you mm -hmm. add bell peppers right. or something like that, then you'd want to throw it in at this stage so that they're able to get cooked and that would be really good up a little bit too. So when I wrote this recipe, I wanted to make this as basic as possible because as I've mentioned, I have a three-year-old and he loves beans and he loves tortillas and he loves quesadillas. So I figured this was a good way to do that, but I found just using the beans and the cheese and the um, tortillas, it didn't have enough flavor. So I, that's why I added the onion because it adds flavor, but it doesn't add like something that he would be able to pick out and be like, you know, no, I don't like this, you know, unless it's Tuesday and then maybe he'll decide that. So then I just put in some chili powder and some cumin. And again, I do that kind of by feel by smell I put it in I like things really cumin-y I think cumin's a great spice so if while I'm sauteing it if I feel like I don't smell enough of the cumin I'll add more probably drives my husband crazy because he's a chef so he's very his flavor he, he's got a really good palate and his, his flavor combinations are really good and I'm kind of like I like this and then throw it in 
we've got those in. So then I'm going to put in the rest of my beans. So I cooked a pound of beans earlier, which gives you about four cups. And I used two cups for the batch that we did earlier. And so while I'm doing this, you'll notice I'm using the wooden spoon that's got the flat edge. And I'm going to kind of crush these a little bit. And like I said, you could make this with canned black beans. Just rinse them and throw them right in. It'd be a really easy dinner. So once you have those kind of cooked through or heated through because they're already cooked and all the flavors kind of melded into it, and about half of them smashed up, you're going to um, put them into the burritos. Thank you. So I call this a walking burrito because a lot of times um, a burrito is rolled and then you have to put paper around it and while you're eating it stuff falls out the bottom if you didn't roll it properly. So I got this idea from the crunch wraps at Taco Bell. So they have those that are folded up and they've got all the stuff and nothing falls out while you're eating it. So I was like, well, why can't I just do that at home? And you can. So you do want to make sure that you get a tortilla that's going to be big enough to yes. hold all the contents. So even these tortillas, which are these are, the, large these are the burrito size, so they are, when you fold them up, they still end up pretty small. So especially if you're going to add anything like bell peppers or spinach or any additional toppings or any kind of meat into your your mix, you want to make sure that when you're scooping it on. Or eggs if you want to make it like a breakfast burrito. Mm -hmm. When you're scooping it on, you want to make sure that you're not overloading it so that you're able to fold it well enough that when you're grilling it, it's not going to fall apart. Okay, so I've got about a tablespoon of shredded cheese that I'm putting in there, and then I've got a quarter cup here, and I'm going to fill that up, and that is the amount of filling that I'm going to be putting in here. So then when you go to fold it, you're going to start on one end and fold it in, and then pleat it and fold it, and pleat it and fold it, pleat it and fold it, pleat it and fold it, and pleat it and fold it until you have it all like that. You usually get about six folds. And then put it so it, the fold side is down, and that's the side you're going to put on the griddle first when you go to grill it, and that's going to seal it. So again, so that's kind of what it looks like on the back. So you've got our cheese, about a tablespoon. And is that turned? I turn it up a little bit more now. So especially since it's on the small burner. And I'm kind of flattening out the filling so it's not super puffy. And again, fold it in, pleat it and fold it, 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 and then your last one. So you get your six turns, and there you've got your little walking burrito or crunch wrap, but I didn't know if I could call it that because I didn't know if Taco Bell had like trademarked that at all. So we'll call it a walking burrito because you can walk around with it and you won't spill it down your shirt. Well, I'd probably spill it down my shirt. <laughs> and if you were to use some kind of corn tortilla for this, um, they're a little bit more difficult to use, so you just want to make sure that they're warmed a little bit mm -hmm. so that they're a little bit easier to fold, but you could totally use this with some kind of corn tortilla. Um, you could use a white flour tortilla if you wanted to. I used a whole grain one. Because um, again, we're, we're using the beans, we're really upping the fiber content of the meal, which is really important for your health. Um, and as anyone who's ever heard me talk about fiber before, as Americans, we do not get enough fiber in our diet. If I, as a dietitian, do one thing in my life and it's to get people have, to have enough fiber, I would be very happy. So Haley's, I turn that up a little bit more. Yeah, I did. Okay. Actually, what you could do, move it to the, yeah, move it to the big ones. There, and then this can be your filler. You'd 
think with this giant island we would have plenty of workspace, but no, we do not. Okay, so while Haley is grilling those up, I am going to go ahead and make our Mediterranean bean salad, which is what I'm using the chickpeas for. So I just got the chickpeas out and they're still draining. And while they drain, I'm gonna go ahead and make a vinaigrette and then I'm gonna add my other ingredients to it and we're gonna make that chickpea Mediterranean salad. So the first part of my vinaigrette is going to be my oil and my vinegar. And a basic vinaigrette ratio is usually three to one oil to vinegar. So I am going to put in three tablespoons of olive oil. Now with this, you want to use an olive oil that you like the flavor of. So using an extra virgin olive oil would be important here. Um, a nicer one, one you like to eat, because you're not going to be cooking it. You're really going to taste that olive oil. You're going to get a lot of flavor from it. A lot of times if you're going to be heating it, you could use just a straight, a not um, an extra virgin olive oil, just a straight up olive oil, which is probably better because it has a higher smoke point. Um, and you're not going to taste it quite so much. So. so I've got those in there and I'm going to add in a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of pepper. I'm going to take a fork, just kind of whisk that around. And then I'm going to add a pint of grape tomatoes that I have halved. If you have the time and patience and a really good paring knife, you could quarter them. I did not, so I have them, so that's entirely up to you. Or, I have this thing at home, it's a grape cutter, where you put the grape in and you go and it cuts it into four little pieces because grapes are big choking hazards. And I've used it with these and it works perfectly. But I forgot to bring it, so. But if you have one of those little grape cutters, it works great for tomatoes as well. And it's great to hand to a toddler under supervision because they can help you cut the things then that they get to eat. So getting them involved in the kitchen is always good. in a pint of grape tomatoes that I've had and I've put in half of a red onion that I have not finely diced but um, it's pretty well diced and then I've put in some fresh parsley and if you have fresh oregano like you grow it or you can actually find it at the grocery store that would be great to add I did not so I put in a little bit of dried and I'm gonna toss that in our vinaigrette And then I'm adding our salt component, which is our feta. And I like to get the feta that is bricked and break it up myself. Anytime you get a cheese that is already grated or crumbled or broken up, it usually has a starch added to it to keep it separate while it's in the packaging. And I don't know, I don't like that. I find that this is going to eventually, the feta is going to add a creaminess to the vinaigrette that if it had that starch on it, you're not going to get that same creaminess. Not that you can't use the pre-crumbled feta, you can. Sometimes I buy the giant one at Costco, but if you can, try and get the brick and break it up because it will taste better. Feta's really easy to crumble, so it doesn't add a lot of extra work. Right, I don't, have, cheese. I don't have to get out the, for the other cheese, for those I did buy the shredded cheese, so I don't have to get out the grater and do it. That's pretty easy to do. Mm -hmm. On our new griddle. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my feta in there. I'm gonna put my chickpeas in there, and then I'm gonna give my hands another wash. Highlight while she's doing that, we used these whole wheat tortillas, um, and these just note have 25 grams of fiber in one tortilla, which for a woman is a lot, pretty yeah, much your recommendation for a day. So, if you're adding beans into this 
just something that you probably want to pay attention to so that... Right, because you if you currently don't eat a lot of fiber and you start adding it to your diet, which is good, you need to add fiber to your diet if you don't eat enough, you want to make sure that you do so gradually and that while you do that, you drink plenty of water because sometimes um, adding a lot of fiber to your diet, particularly like the fiber you find in beans, it can lead into some GI distress, give you a little, make you a little gassy, a little bloated, a little uncomfortable. So, want to make sure that that does not happen. And some of the reasons we talk about fiber so much, um, there's two different types of fiber, but overall, I mean, when you see it on a package, usually you just see dietary fiber. It doesn't always break it down for you, but fiber is really important, just helping keep your GI tract clean, but also it helps to lower your cholesterol because it can help bind with that cholesterol and um, excrete it. And it just has a lot of really great benefits. And it's usually found in really any kind of plant. Any plant will have products. it. Um, and so the way we describe it to the kids, because most of the time we're talking to kids, is that fiber comes in two forms. There's the broom and there's the sponge. So the insoluble fiber, the kind you're gonna get from your fruits and your veggies primarily, is going to be like the broom. And that's the one that's gonna clean out your insides and it's gonna help keep things moving. Um, and then everybody giggles when we say that. And then there's the sponge. And that's the one that's gonna help clean out your blood. And that's the one that's gonna help with the cholesterol. And that's, the, that's called soluble fiber. And that's typically what we get from our beans, our whole grains, those kinds of products. So both are important, mm -hmm. both are necessary. And like Kaylee said, they don't usually mix them up on the nutrition mm -hmm. label. Sometimes, Sometimes they do. Sometimes if they're being extra. But they don't have to. They can, it's not like added sugar where they have to list it separately. But dietary fiber is just listed as mm -hmm. fiber. So you'll see I added the chickpeas there. And then I'm just mixing it around until everything gets coated with that vinaigrette that I made at the bottom. Now, if you wanted to just use your favorite red wine vinaigrette that you can purchase at the store, you could use that, totally fine. If you wanted to use canned chickpeas, you could do that. I would rinse them before adding it because since we put um, some salt and some feta in here, it's gonna be pretty salty, so you don't want to overload that salt. You but can usually is. find low sodium or, or no, no, salt salt added. no salt added beans too. Yeah, so that is our Mediterranean salad. Um, another thing, I was talking to my mom this afternoon and she was making, and she just posted this on Facebook because she did some white beans in her crock pot yesterday. So she was figuring out ways to use those um, throughout the week because she made a whole bunch of them. And so she was talking about doing this type of salad but adding cucumbers to it as well. So not just tomatoes but having the white beans and the cucumbers. And you can do that as well. Like I said, this is the kind of cooking where you can add what you like, leave out what you don't, use what you have on hand, and it will all work out. So we're not gonna see the black beans finish tonight because it's gonna take a little bit longer for that, but you're gonna um, let it sit and naturally, naturally release for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then you'll, you can vent the rest of it and drain them just like I did the chickpeas. And that'll give you those black beans that you can use for a recipe like this or any other recipe. Toss it with some um, fire roasted corn mm -hmm. and have fun on top of that. Be really good. Delicious. Yeah. So, do we have any questions at all, Lori? No questions? Okay. Well, like I said, Lori's going to post the um, recipes in the comments. And if anybody who's watching this later, not live, happens to have any questions, we do check those comments. So please let us know what you're thinking. Our next cooking demo is going to be on March 26th, and we're gonna be talking about using frozen vegetables. Um, a lot of times it's the best way to get something out of season, or if you just need to use a little bit, they're a great way to add vegetables to your diet. So that's what we're gonna talk about next time, and we hope to see you then. Bye.